Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Today I wanted to talk to you about um, how, how I got uh, spaceships going back and forth from Kothar to Norvis and Norvis orbit and, and so on. Um, however, as I was having a bit of a look around and trying to get ready for, to, to record the episode, I noticed quite a lot of things that are going wrong. So we'll talk a little bit about what's actually happening and then talk about what's causing issues, shall we? So the first thing is, um, this spaceship here is, this is the one that flies to Norvis orbit, as we can see by, if we look on here, 511 orbit over there on the, in the um, information panel. That's saying that this, when it takes off, will go to orbit, which is great. So that's, this is, this is the one that's been flying backwards and forwards, taking the Iridium up into Norvis orbit, where it can then be uh, used for all of the space science that's going on. As you can see next to it here, there is an additional place for a spaceship to land that isn't finished yet, because when I disinspect it out, now that one's gone. Um, there wasn't enough. I didn't have the bits on the planet to put these down. So I'm going to need to fly out there and, and sort that out at some point. So that's um, a thing that needs fixing. The next, the other thing I did on, uh, but however, that spaceship is working nicely. That's the one that's always been, has been there for quite a while and is working nicely. I also came over here and I built up this system over here. And this look, well, should look very, very familiar to you because it's basically identical to the one I had on Miokin. We've got the core miners here digging up the digging up the core fragments. Uh, we're then crushing them out to get iridium and stone and normal core fragments. Those are then being passed up here and split out as appropriate. The iridium is being sent off to this station here to be taken away by trains. The rest of it is being dumped down here into these chests, into these warehouses to be put into these trains. They will then look like get onto the spaceship and fly off over to Norvis where we'll uh, process the core chunks and, uh, and dump the stone out as well. Um, and that's all very well except as you've noticed this is completely filled up and ground to a halt and so after a little bit of research I think hang on what this, this has got the this has got the priority set probably here as you can see it's set to 10 which is higher than any of the other mines so if we look at if we look at this mine here for example there's there's no priority set <clears throat> so LTN will try will prioritize this station the trains will come here first and then and, uh, and take the stuff away so I thought why is that not working is, is the iridium not flowing down here and no it isn't and it turns out the problem is I sort of traced it in here. We thought, okay, it's getting, it's being fed in here. It's being crushed. It's being crushed. It comes up to here, up to here, up to here. But then these don't have any of the iridium powder coming through. But these are working fine. What's the, what's the problem in here? Oh, it's this sand has um, the sand has backed up completely, uh, and that's backed up completely. Oh, no, actually, the stone's backing up a bit up here as well, and that's backed up because the glass has backed up completely up here. So we're no longer making the uh, the sand and the stone into into glass to ship it away. And that's because this rocket is completely full and there's nowhere for it to go. So I need to do some rebalancing of where I'm sending the glass to. And that's a little bit tricky because at the moment, um, we're also making, we're using glass up on mostly on Norvis at the moment. It's where it's being turned into um, the memory card substrates over here. Uh, there's lots and lots of glass being used up here. Um, not right now, but, but in general. Um, and quite a lot more being used on Norvis for other things as well, I think think and there is some being used up in space as well but i'm not i'm not bringing i have a rocket down here that is able to where is it this one is able to take glass from norvis and up into space or to wherever else it's needed i've turned this off so it's not actually trying to take it anywhere so this isn't supplying any however that means that one of the big sinks for glass is not actually um, is not isn't, isn't running from um, from the, the the places where I'm trying to get rid of it, and so I think what I'm going to need to do, rather unfortunately, is start bringing glass down to Norvis, and then potentially using the supply of glass that's being created on Norvis as an emergency overflow to go elsewhere, and that's a bit. It's a bit unhelpful because I'd like I don't want to be double handling it like that. I don't want to be landing it on Norvis just to, just to blast it off again because that's a big waste of rocket fuel. That said, we, we aren't short of rocket fuel at the moment, so it's not too much of a problem. It just it just feels a bit wasteful, like maybe I should be collecting all of this somewhere up in space and then delivering it from there. But I don't I'm not sure what a good way to do that would be at the moment. So that's a slight um, a slight downside of, of, of what's going on at the moment and is going to cause some some uh, a, f a few problems here and there. Um, however, the, the 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 basic system over on Kothar is essentially working. Uh, we just have some problems with, with getting rid of the um, the overflow of the byproducts. The other thing I've done, and this is now drained completely, is to have another spaceship that's bringing Iridium from Kothar down to Norvis because, ah yes, this, this is another, um, another, another yak shave. Up in orbit here, 
I've been building a lot of spaceships up here and a lot of other things. And that requires massive quantities of, um, of heat shield tiles that are going into things like um, spaceship flooring and... Uh, not that one. But yeah, spaceship flooring requires heat shielding. We've got the walls require heat shielding. The doors require heat shielding. Everything around here requires heat shielding. These things require... Oh no, these ones don't. These require glass. But you get the, you get the point. All of this stuff and the, it requires lots and lots of heat shielding. And some of the... Um, some of the more advanced sciences, I was talking about material science last week, um, and we've got, that's biological, over here in material science we've got, I've now got machines making the um, the heat shield tiles in order to make the, uh, subs, the, the substrates and so on all the way up to make the um, to make to make the science packs and that's kind of wasteful because it would be, it would be better to make all of this stuff on Norvis where I can use productivity modules and ship it up here. The thing is, down on Norvis We've got yes, we've got this huge area making the uh, making the heat shield tiles, and they are actually they're, they're they're caught up at the moment. We haven't we haven't actually run out of iridium yet. We're just a bit we're just a little bit short of it, but we haven't actually run out because this has slowed down. Um, but it's much more effic eff um, efficient to make it here, where I can use these productivity modules to get an extra 16%. Um, I should actually put more productivity modules in all of these, um, just to make everything a bit more a li that little bit more efficient. But um, I haven't. I'll put that on the to do list as well. So yeah, those can make it a bit more efficiently, and then we, and then if, if from there, if we can ship it up to everywhere that where it's required in in the spaceship that lands here, then that'll make things a lot better. So that's on my um, that's something I quite like to do, and maybe then shift over to that. Uh, but that requires me to have a, a steady supply of iridium coming to Norvis, in or, um, and that means I need to sort out the problems of these spaceships. So that's so there's quite a lot of things there that I need to sort of. I need to work through and, and, and fix up in order to get this working nicely. And that's going to require certainly at least one visit to Kothar in order to put down those extra bits and pieces I need. Or maybe I could shove them on one of these ships in a yellow chest and they get done like that, like that one. And they'll get done automatically when it gets there. We'll have to, we'll have to see. So there's, yeah, there's a couple, of, um, a couple of things there that need to be sorted out. The next thing I've been looking at is a sort of a continuation of this. In Norvis Orbit, I want to switch over to having... So I've, what I've had up until now is this spaceship would land here. It would unload all of the stuff it's brought with it. That would flow round to wherever it's needed. Uh, sorry, that would flow down down here, and it would all be put into this landing pad here, where it would, go, would then be put into this purple chair, uh, purple warehouse, and then distributed into all of these. Now that's that was sort of working okay when it was when when I wasn't really using very much of it. When I was using little bits of some of the some of the motors and things to build up some of the the bits and pieces I needed here for all of these all these machines like the um, uh, particle accelerator, laser research facilities, um, EM facilities, and uh, I can't remember what half these are. All those sort of things that are being made in relatively small quantities. But now that I've started building building up spaceships and there's quite a lot of other stuff that's needed in in much larger quantities having all of this done by logistics bots isn't well again it's it's not the feel i'm going for with the um with the base it i it it, it, it does work but i keep the the logistics bots keep crashing because i've got too many of them um the the process is a bit too slow as you can see here they're, they're continuously bringing stuff over for making in this case solar panels so all of this is running it is not ideal, and then to ex to exacerbate that, when I started trying to make probes for um, for going off and getting those other science things, we find that the star probes require rocket control units and solar panels and all these sort of things in in relatively small quantities, and so it then gets a bit more awkward to start trying to build all these things up here. We're actually starting to build stuff that we need for science around here, and that's not ideal because I don't want any of that to be reliant on the robo on the robo uh, on the logistics uh, bots. So, I've done a bit of a redesign. Now, we've got this one belt coming out of here, and as you can see it's clogged up because I'm only partway through the redesign at the moment. But that floods all of the stuff down down these belts here. We break off individual things like all the science packs and the um, satellite telemetry and we're feeding those into into a station here so we're still using a special station for the um for the for the uh, norvian science packs that that that's fine i don't care about uh, and the and these things i don't care about that but then everything else it carries on down this belt here where we're pulling out extra we're pu putting an extra and down here we're now splitting out so these heat shield tiles that are coming up from norvis are being split out and put onto a train so that they can be picked up and taken off to the uh, and used through LTN and taken off to the places where they're needed. So we can start making them much more efficiently by making them down on Norvis, bringing them up here on mass, and then loading them into the rail system. Now this is 
this this system of having a single belt coming down here is to be honest it's kind of horrible it's it's not the best way to unload a spaceship but it's what it's what i was using before and this belt does come out more or less full from these inserters um, the problem arises when you've got too much of something. So we've got the yeah we've got this system down here, and we're filtering out all the different things. Like we start, I want to start bringing up these um, nuclear chamber pots, the no the yeah, the fuel cells, uh, because they we're going to need them for for sciences now. Um, and then I've got all along here. I've got I'm splitting out all these various other things. So here we clearly have a lot more of these belts than I um, know what to do with at this point. So we'll put in a little bit more uh, space for the for the belts down here. Because I do I do get through a lot of belts. These should possibly be um, something bigger than a, a steel chest to be honest. Um, because they're obviously not not providing enough space because it's well, one of them isn't providing enough space because it's full. So we'll we'll see. Well, maybe I'll maybe I'll upgrade these to something something slightly better. But the idea is that along here we'll then pull out the rocket control units here. We'll we'll put we can put the um, the solar panels that are being made up here onto this onto this belt as well and they'll be put filtered out into the into the relevant places so they can be picked up by an LTN train as well. So we'll get all of these all of those sort of things coming along here. We've got a few excess spare things at the end here that I need to deal with separately. But you know it's a it's it's a process. Um, it's, it's coming along nicely. And then what I plan to do eventually is branch off from all of these and have another bus running along here that run that has all of the things that we're going to need for making everything that's made around here and we can start doing that from from a bus system rather than from all of these requester chests because that just isn't isn't quite right so that's this is phase one making it available to an ltn then phase two is going to be making it available to for building as i say all of this stuff whether i'll do absolutely all of it or whether i'll get fed up part way through i don't know it's something i can tinker with over time and just gradually expand on Oh, and we've got, and also because there's so many things, making making the solar panels also requires these mirrors. So I've now got an LTN system bringing those mirrors down here where we can unload them, and then the, these can, the bots can fly them out. But again, eventually that'll be put onto belt, taken up to taken up to where I'm making the solar panels, and and we'll expand from there on. So yeah, that's quite a, that's going to be a massive massive undertaking. Um, it's also going to be a bit dull and drawn out so i'm probably not going to do it on stream i'm going to do it at times when i find other other opportunities to play factorio which are few and far between if i'm being honest that my life is a bit too full of other things but the theory is that once i get all of that up and running um i should be able to get that sorted out and start building and start having things being a bit less reliant on on logistics bots and because of that the throughput should be a bit better i should i should be able to build things a bit more efficiently quickly smoothly i should get up the sort of supplies i want and a lot of these things are for building stuff either manually or with or with the or building up spaceships and things so i'm not going to need massive output belts of these they'll all probably just feed straight out into into red chests as they're doing at the moment but having all of the inputs sorted out a bit more nicely will um make things work a bit better so we'll do that as well so there we go that's that's unblocked this Maybe what I should actually be doing here is, is using a slightly larger chest, a couple of inserters rather than the single ones. But this is at least a start on this. And then, because as you can see, these the, we've now got the um, the things that I know I use in larger quantities, like the uh, substrates, flow, uh, scaffoldings are flowing through, and I'm putting them in a warehouse. So these should probably have, again, should have a larger uh, chest of, of some sort to put them into. All of these I will eventually upgrade to um, to blue ch to, to, no, to red chest so they can provide to the logistics network. But first, I need to pull all of what's already in the logistics network out, which is what this chest is doing, and that's why there's so many of these belts flowing through here because I'm trying to pull out all of the ones that are in the system up here and just generally tidy things up a bit and get things a bit more organised and a bit more sorted. And all of this is, of course, linked up to the red these red cables that are bringing it up to to put into the um, into the um, what do we call it? Cable logistics network thing here that's being transmitted back to Norvis. So, I, so all of this is still counted as stuff we've got in stock up here, um, and also that's meant that I've had to use green cables to carry the signals to the stations. But I don't think that matters at all. So the system, yeah, I think this system is basically working. There's a lot of a lot of finishing off needs to be done with it. A lot of bugs need to be worked out. Um, now what we've we got coming out of so, but now we've got at least got things flowing again. So we've got the um, uh, substrates for the memory sticks being pulled out here because that's, that's the first thing that comes out. And yeah, there's a lot of things in this in this uh, chest, but it's all being it's all being arranged and sorted now, and this should should just work to um, as they say and 
but we'll see how it goes. I'm slightly surprised these are pulling out in somewhat random order. Um, perhaps if I go up here and no, uh, up here and have a look at it, that'll probably sort it now, and we'll just get these being pulled pulled out maybe. Yes, so we've got. <laughs> so these these chests are sorted somewhat randomly as they get filled up, but when I open them, then that tells the game to the game to actually sort them. I don't know whether this is better or worse, actually having a steady stream of one thing coming out, or um, or whether I want it to be randomised. I probably actually want it to be randomised because then when it comes down to things like this, where I don't have enough inserters pulling them out, it'll be a bit more shuffled, and therefore we won't we'll have a better a better distribution of. Um, things coming through so we might get some belts some underground belts some splitters and some robot control uh, rocket control units or something like that anyway i'm starting to ramble now so this, yeah, that's that that's usually a good sign that it's time to uh, time to end the episode um so this is most, mostly been one of the things that aren't working very well and need fixing and improving so with the with the core processing, it's it's mostly sort of basically kind of working. I just need to deal with the glass not going to the right places, and I need to deal with the landing pad for the iridium not um, uh, not being landing pad for loading iridium not having been built properly. I think I'm probably going to need to mess around with the um, uh, the clamp numbers as well a little bit just get to get that working properly. But these are all things that are reasonably straightforward. I, I sh shouldn't have too much trouble doing that. So, as ever, thank you for watching. This has been a, a quick update on what's been going on in um, in, in uh, space exploration. There's quite a lot more to do, and hopefully in in a future episode I'll be able to report back and say how much more work I've got done on this new new bus system down here and all of this this shenaniganery. Um, but in the meantime, there are, there is plenty more to talk about. But uh, that's all I have for you today. So don't forget to come along to these streams on every Tuesday evening, and the and on Thursday evenings we're having the Factorio Industrial Revolution streams. That's me and some friends. So we're um, these those both start at 7:30 UK time. It's nice to have people along watching over my shoulder and uh, pointing out the mistakes I make, and and you know just joining in with the chat. It's nice to have people to talk to when I'm playing these games. So it's yeah, I I very much appreciate everyone coming along. If you subscribe, of course, you'll be notified of all these things when they happen, and uh, you'll be told about any episodes when they pop up. And I have noticed that only about a third of the people who watch these uh, videos are subscribed, so it'd be quite nice if a few more of you did. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I still want to get to about a, to a thousand subscribers because that's the big milestone on YouTube. I'm nearly halfway there at the moment, so I need a big push to get me there. But things are going, are going pretty well. We've also got the GTA videos coming out twice a week. Those are um, we're gradually expanding our rule sets for that. So we're uh, doing try and play, ex experimenting with new things based around the whole sort of normal cat and mouse idea. I think they're running. Very, I think they're going very very well. And there's some really good episodes coming out at the moment. So if you've got the time for that as well, please come along and and, uh, and watch those. Let me know what you think, or if you'd like to join in, or if you or if you have any good ideas, drop them in the comments. So this has been Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.